everyone it's Wednesday and in case you're wondering what that says it says you had me at hello um, Zig my cat is gray and his tail curls exactly like that so I had to buy that well I'll tell you what I'm gonna do today I'm gonna show you patterns that leap out at me and that I know I want to sew and I know they're gonna look good well, how do you know that? A lot of that is trial and error. Um, however, you get to a point where you know what works on your body and you know what you kind of want to avoid. Um, before we go any further, let me point out something about this blouse I'm wearing. I sewed this a long time ago before I had gotten a lot more sewing knowledge on board. And these shoulder straps are completely unequal this one's wide this one's narrow do I wear it anyway of course I do and I want to encourage you if you are a new sewer wear what you make wear what you make don't wait until your clothing is perfect to wear it first of all none of us sew perfect clothing and second of all People aren't going to notice what you think is glaringly wrong with your garment. People aren't going to notice. Now, you might have picked up on that because I'm just sitting here and we're spending some time together. But in passing, in public, out and about, nope, people aren't going to notice. I want you to wear what you make because you're going to see a progression and it's going to be exciting, and it's going to spur you on to keep sewing. So, back to the matter at hand. I'm just gonna hold up a few patterns that when I saw them, I thought, oh yeah, I'm definitely going to make that. Well, how do you know that something is going to look good on you? I guess the technical answer is we don't. We don't know because the very nature of sewing is that you don't get to see what it looks like until it's done. Now, sure, you can do a mock-up, you can sew a muslin or a toile and uh, get your fitting issues down before you cut into your good fabric. That is always an option. And sometimes that's helpful for deciding, oh, this isn't gonna look good after all. I just sewed a blouse last weekend. Uh, I had high hopes for it. I used some really cool fabric and the armholes are definitely large enough for a huge man, perhaps a sumo wrestler to wear. They are enormous and it's not gonna look right with a tank underneath. No, these were beyond saving. Um, I'll pull the pattern and, and show it to you. Hang on. This was Quick Sew 3848. And I chose the version with the buttons down the front. I knew I wasn't going to put those little pocket flaps on, but I did, I did put on a chest pocket. Um, I absolutely love this fabric. It's... I'm not sure what it is, but it feels almost like a sand washed silk, even though I know it's not silk. It's just got a really pretty finish to it. But as I mentioned, those armholes, they are ridiculous. They are just humongo. Now the back, kind of goes in, let's see, yeah. The back definitely is cut in, and that's why they're so big, but it just, it doesn't work. The coverage is completely wrong. So, you know, that was a non-starter. I might attempt it again and try and redraw the armholes. So I'm not completely discouraged because I do think it's a cute style. 
people have made this top, so it can work. <laughs> but this one, no. This was no good, and I thought, well, can I just take them in on the side seam? No, that would skew the front. Um, at any rate, you know, sewing is a gamble, and sometimes you don't exactly win. But we press on because, you know, there's a million patterns in the Naked City, and something's going to work. And when we get a success, there's nothing better. So these are a couple patterns that I thought I am making those. This one I just won off eBay. And it is a simple knit pullover dress. But what made it stand out to me is the tie front. And that is sewn right into the side seams of the dress to sort of give the appearance of a little jacket and a little detail like that is always going to get me. First of all, I love tie front anything, but I thought, oh, that is really, really cute. Now look at that blue option. That dress, I love. I love A-line. I love no waist. I love a scoop neck. That's got it all. So I bid on this pattern and I got it. Here's a dress that I saw and, oh, what was that number? That was Simplicity 9681. That's a bit of a vintage. I'm thinking, um, I don't know. Oh, look, glasses. This is... 1995, okay? This is a new Simplicity 8992. What do I love about this? A V-neck, a button front, no waist, long sleeves, long length. I love everything about it. So that one I would pick, I will make, and I have a good feeling about it. This is another style that is a slam dunk for me. This is New Look 6619. I love yokes. I love yokes, particularly above the bust. Well, I guess they're always gonna be above the bust, right? Um, that to me is just a wonderful style, easy to wear. I'm very interested in comfort. I do want patterns to be flattering, but comfort, oh yes, we're going for comfort. This dress by McCall's 6102, it's also released under another number. I can't remember what it is. I have made this one four or five times. This is a great style for me, and you're kind of seeing a theme of A-line not terribly fitted, but fitted up through the bust. That's what I love. Here you can make it short, you can make it long, you could even bring it down to a maxi. You can show off fabric. That's a great pattern and an instant love from me. Now, here's a 1960s pattern, a jiffy, two main pieces, what's not to love. And whenever I see them with belts, I usually think that I'm going to wear them without the belt. Now, I'm trying to wear more belts because, you know, that opens up a whole lot more style options if you add a belt to something. I've always shied away from belts. Don't like belts, don't wanna call attention to my stomach, and yet, a belt can be very slimming and look very smart, as evidenced here. So cut-on sleeves, I love. Absolutely love cut-on sleeves. Have no problem with that. Here are the line drawings for this dress. And is the waist gathered? I guess it is. Simple to sew. 
the dress has a slightly lowered round neckline. Check that out for a lowered round <laughs> neckline. What would they call necklines today if that's low? Uh, short kimono sleeves and a back zipper clothing, uh, closing, fitted at the waistline with an elastic casing. Well, I could leave the elastic casing out and do more of a sheath dress. This has many, many things going for it. We see a yoke. We see A-line shaping and a bit of interest there with the pleats. I love this dress. And guess what? Oh, yes. I have two of them. And Candace will fit into one. I'll fit into this big one. Candace will fit into this little one. And I'm thinking about doing... Well, she's a little old for mommy and me at 27. I realize that. But I could make them in complementary fabrics. And we wouldn't have to wear them together. But I just thought, oh, wouldn't that be fun to make us each one of those? This is another style dress that I say I would love. I've never sewn a Sandra Betzina pattern by Vogue. This is 1496. It's like a cocoon shaped dress. This is a very flattering style on me. And I'm excited about this dress. I've had this for a while and I need to I need to get busy and, and make this one. Now here are a couple styles that I went ahead and bought, but they're not my norm. They're out of my comfort zone. So this one you can see has a very fitted waist and I don't usually sew these, but I'm gonna give them a whirl. I love the necklines on these. You have your choice of square neck or V neck two neckline styles that I love. And we have pockets, and it's just a classic, classic dress. So, classic, classic dress. So I'm gonna give that one a whirl. And this is out of my comfort zone. I was all set to make this, and then I chickened out when I made that uh, seersucker skirt. Seersucker skirt. I didn't make this because I thought, oh, all those pleats around my gut, that's gonna look, uh, that's gonna be a bit scary. And it will be a bit scary. However, it's a darling skirt. It may force me to tuck my shirt in and try something new. So what's the point of all this? The point is this, choose clothing that you love. You all know what you love to wear. We all have something in our closet that we love to put on. It feels good, we feel good wearing it. Uh, you just kind of feel more confident and it lightens your mood. So you can sort of extrapolate styles from clothing that you love to wear. But I'm also gonna say, try something a little bit out of your comfort zone, just just for curiosity's sake. And if it doesn't work out, okay, then you have that knowledge, right? So nothing is ever lost in sewing, even with this guy. And I was so disappointed because I wanted to wear this to my sister's party. I wasn't gonna wear my 1960s dress because my brother-in-law told me it was just gonna be like jeans and shorts, and I thought that might be too dressy. So I was going to make this and wear it with some jean shorts, and it was just not a good fit. I put that style pocket on it instead of the flaps, and I want to try again with this, and I have a bunch of the fabric left, so whew, so glad. Um, other than that, that's pretty much how I choose patterns. There are certain things that are always gonna work for me. 
A-line yokes. I love a square neck. I love a boat neck. Um, loose. I like shapeless. You know, don't apologize for what you like. And some people say, well, I don't really like to wear dresses. That's fine. There's no law that says you have to wear a dress. Uh, I prefer knits. Great. So knits. So we each have our own style, and, and that's a good, good thing. I hope you all are sewing this week. How are you doing with your toppers? I haven't started mine yet, so I need to... Um, I need to choose a pattern. I'll have my 1960s dress to show you next time, okay? And uh, all those patterns, I gotta get back and show you those too. Thanks for tuning in today and I'll chat with you soon. See you next time, bye.